Thanks for joining us on the Dollars and Cents podcast. If you are listening to the Dollars and Cents podcast for the first time, it's a show where we get people to discuss some of the most interesting finance topics. And today, we are at the FSM Invest Expo 2025. This is an annual event organized by FSM One, and it's usually the first investment event that we have each year in Singapore. And the team we have this year for the FSM Invest Expo is Seize the Future, Supercharge Your Portfolio. And I can't think of something better to think about the future than chips, microchips. Chips are really the building block of modern technology, powering everything from computers, smartphone, gaming hardware to electric vehicle. And as we stand on the brink of a new era dominated by AI, semiconductor stocks have once again taken centre stage in the investment world. With their crucial role in enabling AI advancement, the semiconductor industry offers immense opportunity but also unique challenges. For our topic today, we'll be discussing understanding the semiconductor industry in the age of AI. And joining me today to discuss this topic is Tan Te Ching, who is the Portfolio Manager, Research and Portfolio Management at IFA Singapore. Te Ching, welcome to the show. Thanks, Timothy. Happy to be here. I don't want to presume that the people watching or listening to this podcast will understand the semiconductor industry. So let's just start with the basic. Um, can you just explain to us why semiconductor stocks are so crucial in today's economy particularly with the rise of AI technology. I think the simple way to think of it is semiconductors, they are the bedrock of all technology, past, present, and future. So if you look at all the things that you use, even this computer in front of you, there's tons of semiconductors inside. Maybe not tons, but in a more figurative sense. Uh, the phones that you use, even your seemingly consumer electronics, things like your washing machine, the coffee makers, all these things also have semiconductors inside them, which is why as the world itself becomes increasingly tech-driven, becomes increasingly digitalized, the demand for semiconductors will only continue to increase. And that is also what makes the industry so important. Chips has always been at the forefront of technology, whether it's your computer, smartphones, cloud computing, I think electric vehicles as well. We always seem to require better, smaller, faster chips for this technology to actually work. Yeah. Is that a way to think about the growth of the industry? Is it kind of like a proxy for technology? Is that a safe way to think about it? I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, as we become increasingly digitalized as a society, demand for semiconductors is going to increase. And I think this increase is actually driven, can be broken down into two main parts. So the first is uh, the increasing number of semiconductor applications. So for instance, things that were not smart in the past, these days they are smart. Like so, your television. Yeah, exactly. Or even cars, for instance. Many years ago when the first car was created, it was completely mechanical. There's there was, no electronic. Yeah, correct. But nowadays, cars have radios, have displays, and even though today, cars have uh, autonomous driving features, and all these things, they require a lot of semiconductors for all your cameras, your sensors, your radars to function. Can you say the same thing for uh, gaming consoles? I think... Uh, or do they always add some of these microchips, or is it just more intensive now? No, I think uh, it's, uh, it relates more to your second point. Uh, I think gaming consoles from the beginning, they are already one of the applications for semiconductors really. But like you said, uh, as time progresses, we need more and more semiconductors to run the more higher end games with better graphics and things like that. Which is why I think some of the gaming consoles today, if you compare it back to the past, you can see that first of all, the graphics is way really, better. Yeah, way better. And that is also partly because of advancements in semiconductor technology. Right, right. I, I think that's an interesting way to think about it, which is everything that you touch, any electronic, even, I think even your TV, your, maybe even your aircon, I'm just wondering whether your fridge and your aircon, all these smart devices, do they also require uh, some of these microchips these days to function your fan? For Definitely, example. yeah. I think as long as it's a, it's a smart device, I think uh, it, if it has some form of connection through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or to your phone, I think definitely you will have semiconductors inside. Yeah, if you it. dismantle any of your fan or your TV, you will see all those microchips in yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Actually. Yeah, and let's just go to AI because I think that has been really the theme for 2024, how the growth of AI algorithms, data learning, um, algorithms have really powered the requirement for semiconductor companies and, and this includes companies like NVIDIA, I'm just going to throw out a name, which everyone has been talking about last year, right? So I just want to ask you, um, AI is seen as a game changer for many industries. Do you mind sharing how semiconductor is enabling this advancement in AI? Before I answer this question, funny that you brought up NVIDIA because I was uh, actually looking at NVIDIA uh, over the past few weeks. So NVIDIA, Historically, it's a company that does chips for mainly gaming purposes. Gaming, okay. Yeah. So the data center revenue back many years ago 
was only a small portion of their business. In fact, it was an insignificant portion of their business. When you say gaming, are you talking about things like your Xbox? Uh, more of your uh, like the, the graphic card graphics that card. you use in your computers. Yeah, so I think that was uh, one of their core business segments. But like I said, data centers, they only represented a rather a, a very tiny amount of the entire business. The interesting thing today is that Data centers are actually the biggest segment in NVIDIA's uh, total revenue breakdown these days. So I think it also goes to show how far AI has actually come and uh, the also driven the fortunes of companies like NVIDIA and also its peer companies like AMD and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and then that's really because um, they need all this data to be, the, the, the large volume of data that needs to be processed. Correct. Right. So that needs to be processed increases the demand for all this chips as well, right? I think the, the special thing about AI is that it requires a lot more computing power than what uh, what you might expect. So it's not, sim uh, it's not something simple like just using your computer to uh, surf the internet and do things like that. All these things, they require a lot more chips, a lot more uh, advanced chips, which can cost thousands or perhaps even tens of thousands of dollars. So I think all these things also contributes to growth in the semiconductor industry. Can I even ask like exponentially, the demand is exponentially more as more and more people uses, use all this AI programming and all these things like the demand is exponential, right? In yes. terms of it, and which I think, is what's uh, really fueling the growth for some of these stocks or at least the potential yeah. to fuel the growth for these companies. Yeah, so you know like uh, for most of the AI applications and software out there, they're actually backed by some of the bigger tech companies in the US. So like Microsoft, uh, Amazon, they all have their own AI initiatives. And these companies, they are spending billions and billions of dollars every year just to buy chips that can run their AI models, to do research and development, and of course, to build data centers. And I think this huge amount of spending from all these big tech companies, it is also one of the growth drivers for the semiconductor companies itself. Right. And I mean, with every opportunity, we comes with it some risk, right? What are some key challenges or headwinds that, or potential headwinds that you think the semiconductor industry could face? Because it also can be cyclical as well for the industry. So for anyone who's investing in right now, what are some of the concerns they should think about when it comes to risk? So I think for risk, uh... You mentioned that the industry is cyclical. You're absolutely right. Just to give some context, semiconductor cycles, they are essentially driven by fluctuating sales growth numbers. And that actually stems from imbalances in supply and demand. For computers or hardware in general, computer yeah, yeah, electronics. Yeah, anything, even your consumer electronics also. So when times are good, these chip makers, they tend to take an overly optimistic view of the world and produce more than what is required. Then eventually, this high level of production, it becomes unsustainable. And the next thing that they will do is to cut down on production, uh, reduce their capex, and cut down on prices also in order to, to sell off all these excess chips and in order to bring inventory levels down. And because of that, sales growth will fall and that actually causes uh, cycles in the semiconductor industry. So in a way, their fortunes are quite tied closely to the fortunes of the companies that are demanding their microchips. In a way, yes. So for example, if AI is the boom now, and if there is a slowdown in the AI industry, in, in the AI industry, then you know, your semiconductor industry may also face some challenges in terms of mismatch of demand and supply. Yes, in fact, I think if you look at the, some of the recent earnings data from some of the, the semiconductor companies, what they are saying is that they are starting to see a slowdown in the consumer segment, but rather the AI segment is still very strong and it's actually offsetting some of this uh, lost revenue from the consumers and segment. Yeah. It almost seems like you need to take a much a longer term view as well of the industry in order to really uh, be able to ride out the cyclical ups and downs. Yeah, I think it's always good to take a longer term view when it comes to investing. I think longer term investing uh, typically works out better for most people. Do you see geopolitical tensions and trade policies or trade wars kind of affecting the industry as well? Because from my understanding, there is a few major countries when it comes to uh, the semiconductor industry. There's obviously the US and the US companies and then you have companies in Taiwan, Korea, mm -hmm. um, you know, is that something that investors should care about given that, you know, if there is a trade war and you have uh, countries only wanting to buy from their own domestic market, is that an issue? Personally, I feel that that is an issue, but I don't think it's a major cause for concern right now. So uh, like, you, like you mentioned earlier, most of the chips are actually made in countries like Taiwan and South Korea, for instance. So these companies, they manufacture most of the advanced semiconductors. 
So what the US is trying to do is to onshore some of their production uh, in a way to reduce its reliance on Taiwan because of Taiwan's close proximity to China. So China itself is also prioritizing the growth of its domestic semiconductor industry and that of course comes from the years of sanctions by the US. So in the recent years, the US has placed multiple and tougher sanctions each time on China, restricting flow of uh, not just chips, but also the equipment required to manufacture these chips. And as a result, Chinese companies, they have also poured billions of dollars into their own domestic industry to build it up. And if you think in terms of the lost revenue because of uh, US companies not being able to export to China, I think this is a relatively small problem at this point in time. Because right now, what is restricted, it is only the advanced chips. So some of the lower end chips, the US companies, they can still export to China. Right. And furthermore, I think there's also many ways that these companies can actually uh, find ways around these sanctions. For instance, if they know that, okay, uh, this is the requirement, they cannot export chips with uh, all these features to China, then they can create an alternative chip that meets these requirements. So there are actually ways to skirt the sanctions. Is there a reason? Is it because of privacy related stuff or that, you know, there's this sanction in place? I think the, the main concern from the US side is more of uh, national security. Yes. I think privacy could be one of them. I think uh, what they don't want is for China to take all these chips that are designed, manufactured by US and its allies to put them into military applications. Right. So I think national security has been something that is cited by uh, US government officials every time they come up with new sanctions on China. They always say it's a matter of national security. We cannot let China have this technology. So I think that is, the, that is the direction that they're going with. Right, so as an investor, I mean, it's, it's important to at least know some of the nuances uh, in the industry that, you, that may or may not be an issue yeah. when it comes to the specific companies and their growths. What are some factors or metrics that like investors or at least you know, value investors, I like to call value investors, should think about? Because I know even within the industries, the valuation metrics can be quite different. Yeah. NVIDIA is, I don't know, trading at how many times it's, revenue, mm -hmm. whereas the, some of the Asian companies are traded at a value that's a little bit uh, fairer, I guess, from a value investing point of view. But, you know, I'm not the expert here. What are your thoughts or advice? I think uh, some of the things that we can look at is first uh, on the fundamental side. So knowing where we are in the semiconductor cycle, I think that also helps you to form your investment decisions. Obviously, you as much as possible, you don't want to be investing at the peak of the cycle. You want to be investing at the bottom of the cycle when there's a lot of pessimism going around, uh, sales growth is down, share prices are down. Valuations are definitely the important thing for value investors. And for that, we have to look at earnings, but not just any earnings, but rather forward earnings. What can these companies produce in the next two, three, or perhaps even five years? Right. Yeah, there's no point looking in the past because it's, it's the past. The markets are forward looking, so we should always look at forward valuations. Right, I think that's another consideration for sure. I mean, talking about, you know, just the growth of the industry and how it could be cyclical. And obviously, you don't want to invest at the top of the market, ideally. But let's say you do feel like the same. I mean, even if it's at the top of the market, you know, but you do feel that semiconductor sector is something that can really grow. I, I, my question is, is it a must-have today in a diversified portfolio? Because I know that there are investors out there who might who have who I already know and who might also be reading or, or listening or watching this video that might think that hey you know am I potentially missing out uh, but then the valuations are high right now um, you know do you feel like semiconductor companies or stocks or the sector in general is a must have in a, in a diversified portfolio I think given the, the 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 vast amount of potential that semiconductor companies have I think Personally, I feel that it is a must-have okay. because of their strategic importance in terms of the global economy and also the stock market. Like you said, NVIDIA has done very well over the past few years. Valuations, market cap, they're all very high. So all these companies, they are a very important part of the global economy. And if you want a globally diversified portfolio, then I think you should definitely have some exposure to semiconductor companies. And regarding valuations, if investors are worried that valuations are high, but they still want to invest, I think one good way to, to, to work around this is you can adopt a dollar cost averaging strategy and then you wait for, keep an eye out for the market, wait for sharper pullbacks to deploy your, your lump sum investments. So yeah. basically invest a certain sum of money each month into the industry so that when prices are going up, at least you're still capturing some growth. And when prices are going down, you get more units because um, you're investing the same amount each Correct. month. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a great way to think of you know, how you can enter the semiconductor industries. 
we really hope this conversation has been useful for you, especially if you're new to the industry. Um, and thank you, Touching, so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the Thoughts and Sense podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and if you are listening or watching this episode and you like what we have just shared, don't forget to subscribe to us either on YouTube if you're watching this or Spotify if you're listening to this. Leave us your thoughts and your comments as usual. Uh, let us know what you think about this discussion. I'll uh, see you again soon.